So you know when you wait till January and then you start doing your yearly planning and you're like, oh my God, I'm already late. And if you're watching this video in January, you probably have this feeling. But if you're watching this before January, you're not gonna have this feeling. I always thought that waiting till the beginning of the new year to plan everything was like not the most efficient way to do it. So I started this new tradition in my company, Joe Club, the live journaling company, where we sit in November for three to four hours and we literally plan out the entire next year. One of the biggest changes that I see at Joe Club is that Joe Club got so good at planning and that was my huge feedback last year and I was like hey we are not planning we are so bad at this I'm frustrated all the time I have no idea what's going on what we'll do and we got so good at this and it, it's like even like us going back to our document and they're like go to the document update this like you made everyone so accountable to our plan so this is like positive feedback for you too because I feel like it was thanks to you that you were driving the whole thing. So I feel like that was such a huge win. And before I have this team meeting for my company, I actually do this for myself. What does life look like in a year from now? But it's actually in a year and two months from now. I was having the greatest chat ever with AI and I created what essentially became a Bible for all of my next year with my team. And it broke down so many specifics. Like what does each team member need to learn? How many hours do we need to dedicate to X, Y, and Z? How do we organize our team meetings? And when I showed it to my head of growth and operations she was like joe you need to make a video about this this is crazy and i'm like okay i will the reason we do it in november is because december is already crazy you're already in the final sprint and also because you start having new data like you're able to close deals before the end of the year to make the plans that you have now actually happen so anyways yeah i started thinking about my yearly planning in q4 in general <laughs> She's talking in quarters. And it's been so crazy because basically I make a roadmap and at the top of the month, every single month, when the year actually begins, we look at, okay, what did we have planned? Do we need to revise some plans? And yeah, sometimes we do, but the point is we have a general direction and that's what the point of today's video is. We're about to build our road. The road could have some detours. Things are gonna happen that you're not expecting and that's part of life. But if you don't have a direction, you're gonna be showing up willy nilly like you just rolled out of bed. We don't have time for that. We have too much to accomplish. So this video is gonna be a plan with me guided video. And before we get into the actual planning part, if you click in the description box of the video or you visit www.joeclub.world slash planning, you will be able to access a free planning guide, which includes printable PDFs. I'm also including some ChatGPT prompts that you must keep top of mind when you're doing all of your planning. And you make a plan with an elastic mindset. It's always better to have a plan than to not have a plan. Am I right? Am I crazy? I didn't realize I was like this until I realized Realized. And now I'm like, yeah, this is me. I'm a planner. This is what we do. I run retreats. I plan live journaling sessions. I do speaking engagements. I learn languages. Like, you gotta have a plan. Kill the intro, sis. You know she's not your average Joe. Not your average Joe. She's not your average Joe. See, what most people don't realize is that yearly planning actually starts with three years from now. So the first step is grab a cup of coffee, grab a journal, have a think. You wanna close your eyes, get into a meditative state, get into your like, I am a fortune teller. It is three years from present day. Write the date on the page. So whatever today's date is, plus three years. What is your ideal scenario? Where do you live? Who's in your life? What do you do for work? Are you an entrepreneur? Do you have a business? Do you have a partner? Do you have a family? Do you have children? Did you get another degree? Did you learn a new language? What happened in your life? Where did you travel? Once you have a very clear vision of what that looks like, write it down. Journal it in the present tense. Really think about all of these major buckets. Education, family life, which could include romance, career, fitness, intellectual goals. I've included all the buckets in the document that I'm linking below, which you can download for free. I'm gonna create a fictional character. We'll give her a name. Name, Judith. <laughs> All right, so let's plan Judith's life. So in three years, Judith wants to have had her PhD or begun it. She wants to have paid off her student loans, which are 60K. She wants to have a business that is making at least six figures. She's moved abroad. She wants to spend time with her family. Her main core values are togetherness, growth, and education. So she wants to make sure that she has all three of those things when it comes to every single bucket she does. Also a really big part of Judith's life that we didn't mention is that she has many friends and she wants to plan friend trips at least 
two times a year. She also has siblings and she wants to see them. She has niece and nephews. So there's a whole social element that she needs to bake into this yearly plan. We got it. Let's put Judith to work. I run a coaching business that helps people connect to their creative sides and use it in the workplace. My clients are B to C, but I'm thinking of expanding in B to B. In three years, I want to have a PhD in neuroscience with concentration in self-awareness. I want to pay off my student loans for my master's, 60K USD. I have a business that's making 20K net profit right now, and I want to make 100K net profit in three years. I also want to find a great partner. I also want my house to run 400K. I currently take salary 60K, and I want to increase that to 80K next year. My coaching business helps people connect to their creative sides and use in the workplace. My clients are BSC, business plan, and I'm thinking of expanding business. I want to hone my skills and invest in the business. I'm going to train for the next year. I'm going to run and work on I also have a large friendship circle uh, that I want to plan to see my friends at least twice a year. My values are togetherness, education, and growth. So now I'm going to take this like crappily written, terribly punctuated piece of writing, and I'm going to pop it into ChatGPT, and I'm going to say, please convert this into a vision of what three years from now could look like. I should probably back it up and give you a backstory of what is AI, artificial intelligence, and ChatGPT. In a nutshell, simple English, it is crazy. <laughs> but for real, it is this culmination of all of the things that have ever been posted and created on the internet, which by the way has been controversial. There have been some lawsuits about what OpenAI is able and allowed to use to train its chatbot, ChatGPT. In short, you can use this technology for great things and I use it as an assistant, whether it's having an assistant that helps me plan a pitch or give me ideas of how to better structure my emails or tell me how to structure somebody's job description and give me KPIs, key performance indicators. And so I decided for this video, I would be using ChatGPT as my virtual planning assistant. This is free to use. I used a paid version because I'd really be using it all the time and my team uses it as well. And I've been training everybody on my team to use AI so we have less bottlenecks in the processes that we do. The cool thing is that you could tell ChatGPT like, you are a pitch expert. You buy TV shows for a living. Look at this proposal. What is wrong with it? Tell me how to make it better. So it's a dialogue. It's conversation. Don't get me wrong. You still need the discernment. You still need the expertise to know when ChatGPT is straight up lying to you, when the idea is cheesy and bad. But if you do have that discernment and the expertise, this is a streamlining tool that will make your workflow so much faster. This isn't sponsored. And uh, yeah, I'm curious to see how this goes because it saved me a lot of time and I hope it will save you too. And I'm gonna pop it into ChatGPT. And I'm gonna say, please convert this into a vision of what three years from now could look like. It does work as good. All right, now we have our three year vision. And then you can ask ChatGPT, did I miss any buckets of my life? So ChatGPT is telling me all the stuff that I missed. And I'm like, please rewrite the paragraph to include all of these key life elements that I missed. Look at this. Okay, now we're having a page. It went from a paragraph to a page. In three years, I envision myself with a PhD in neuroscience, says Judith. This is where it all gets crazy. You could take two different approaches here. You can dial in on the personal side. You could say, okay, given this information, what do I need to do in the next year to help build this vision. Or you can go business first, which is what I did because I knew that I had my yearly planning with my team. So I did business first to make sure I knew what entrepreneurially I needed to do. And then I go back and kind of like toggle between my personal life and my business life because as an entrepreneur, so much of your personal life is your business life and you have the power to design it, but it gets out of hand if you don't have this plan. So now I have to think which route do you want to take? Personal or business first and personal or business after personal? Either way, right now we go into the sculpting of this plan because it's a conversation, not a monologue. Given this three-year plan, how do you recommend I schedule my next year? Right now, and then you put in specifics of the situation. So hypothetically speaking, if I run a coaching business, my name is Judith. Right now, I have three clients, let's say a quarter, each pay me for packages that make 20K net profit for overhead rent in my office that's a thousand a month and I also pay fifteen hundred dollars a month for my personal rent three hundred for personal utilities I go out to eat once a week and need to pay my loans which equals to eight hundred dollars a month I also want to plan and save 20k if possible as an emergency fund so this is my current financial situation and this is what's really beautiful about this it tells you just face value I have 51k of expenses if my name is Judith when I started doing this for my business I broke down all of the overhead costs that we have 
have to pay, how we're actually making money now, and the level of effort involved in all of the products and services. And I said, if my goal is X amount of net profit, what is the simplest, most efficient way to get there? And it gave me a bunch of scenarios. And then I refined and talked more and said like, yeah, but I don't want to do more than four retreats because it impacts my quality of life. And this is when it becomes a dialogue. So let's see what happens. Now we have a clear number. She needs to make 151K, but then she also needs to think about how many clients. So if she wants to reach this goal, she'll need 91 clients, which is ridiculous. This isn't good enough for me. I don't think 91 clients is realistic. So then what I would say is how can I optimize my net profit with less clients. And this is where it's really exciting because then it gives you ideas of like what strategy should you be putting in place if you want to achieve X amount of money. Increase pricing for coaching packages. So you can either raise your prices and do market research and see what kind of package you can offer or offer like a tiered package. Diversify your revenue streams, online courses, group coaching, digital products. Because efficiency is one of my top values, I'm gonna just straight up be honest with ChatGPT and be like, hey, what are the top three most efficient strategies for me to reach my target? Keeping in mind, I don't want to work for more than 40 hours a week. Here are some options, scale through high value offerings. So I need to basically create a high value offer if I'm Judith, which would mean like you get the baseline coaching package and then there's a bigger package that might include more phone calls or 24 seven access on WhatsApp or something like that. You can do retreats, exclusive workshops and retreats. And these could be thematic, so that's an interesting idea. Leverage digital products and automation. So she could create online courses, that could be interesting and expand through strategic partnerships and networks. So I wanna be realistic. How much do each of these strategies take to begin turning a profit. Please give me a score of how profitable and easy in comparison to one another. So now I'm asking it to score these options. Give me a score. Okay, look, there's a profitability score all of a sudden. And now I'm getting to see what is really profitable. Freaking love AI. Profitability, eight out of 10. E-score, six out of 10. Don't love that for me. Leveraging digital products. Profitability score, nine out of 10. E-score, five out of 10. Strategic partnerships and networks, seven out of 10 and seven out of 10. Okay, and then it also gives me the time frame. Like it would take three to nine months to do strategic partnerships and networks. I'm gonna pick option number one and option number three. Right? up a 12 month plan, given the fact I want to focus on options one and three. Do you advise I start both of them at the same time? Or do I start one, get it off the ground and start the other one next? Wow, don't we love AI? 12 month plan. So according to ChatGPT, it's asking me to do both of these at the same time if my name were Judith, because they complement each other. I wanna break this down even further. Given this roadmap, can you please create quarterly goals, KPIs, and metrics I should have in mind? Write this as a company Bible. Don't forget the key values. Write this for next year, starting at Q1. And then we wait. This is where you start building your actual kind of customized roadmap. We could do this all day. I literally spent a whole Sunday doing this. All right, we have this beautiful, easy to understand vision. In the upcoming year, Judith's company aims to increase profitability and market presence by achieving a net profit target of $100,000 through the successful launch of high value coaching offerings and strategic partnerships. We'll focus on developing and launching these offerings by the end of Q2, securing at least three strategic partnerships within the same timeframe. All right, we're just gonna literally copy this and we're gonna paste it. And before we do this, I wanna start doing headers because then I'm gonna do a table of contents because y'all know we like to stay organized, but I'm not done yet because I want a more specific breakdown. What do you recommend I learn each quarter or month to make sure I'm developing my skills and knowledge as an entrepreneur in the coaching space? Most people don't think about the fact that you need to continue to fill your cup. If you're an entrepreneur, you're not gonna get your greatest ideas from the idea that you started with. It's going to be a consistent growth process. A great way to do that is through books and podcasts and having deep conversations. But books, I feel like, are the original fountain of knowledge because they don't talk back. You need to have space to think and it's not just reading and absorbing it like the theory, but it's reading and the application, the direct application of what you've read. It's Joy, it's Joy, what? It's Judith, no, just kidding, it's me, Joe. I'm coming back at you from the edit bay and as I was chopping up this video, I was like, hold up, this baby is too juicy for one part. And so I'm going to be breaking it up into two parts, which means that from now until the next part, you have all the time to do some homework and start your professional roadmap using AI. I also would love to know, does this help you? Is planning with AI super useful? Are you a little nervous about it? Like, let me know how you're feeling in the comments below and also tell me if planning 
is challenging for you, and if so, why? And if you haven't snagged a free planning guide, y'all, I'm letting you know some juicy resources in there, and it's totally free. So I'm linking that in the description box as well. Let me know what your three-year vision is also. I'm so curious. And if this video could be a helpful part in that three-year vision coming to life, then like, damn, the internet is a good place. I'll see you soon. I appreciate you. Goodbye.